Adventures to new places are exactly what I live for. And when I heard we were going to Puerto Rico for a trip, I was so psyched. Puerto Rico is a beautiful island. It's in the Caribbean Sea and it's a, it faces north. So when you do get those hurricanes, you, you can get quite large swells there. It is home to some fantastic waves and we were lucky while we were there. We actually kind of got a bit of a swell. There was a bit of a shadow cast over the whole trip though because soon after we arrived in Puerto Rico, the news had filtered through that Andy Irons, one of the world's best surfers, a former world champion and an arch rival to Kelly Slater, had just passed away. And I'd worked at Billabong and I'd done a few trips with Andy. So, you know, it's someone that um, I'd known quite well and spent a bit of time with. So it was really, really sad to hear that. And the, um, the fellow competitors on the WCT, they, um, they all got together and did a paddle out for Andy and um, yeah, it was really sad. It was, it was shocking news and I still remember to this day where I was when I found out and, ha and how it made me feel. Surfers are like family. They, they tend to come together in, in moments of crisis like this and everyone stuck around each other and, and really helped lift each other up because Andy was such a strong presence on the tour. Um, he made lifelong friends with a bunch of the world's best surfers. So the news of his passing hit people really, really hard. The main focus of the trip was to cover the world title and that was contested in 2010 by Kelly Slater and South African Geordie Smith. Those guys have been pretty close all year on tour and Geordie was still in with a shot of winning the title going into Puerto Rico. The waves were pretty fun at the main event site, it was this place called Middles and it was predominantly a right hander and the boys were just tearing it apart, absolutely going to town. Puerto Ricans are super passionate people and I remember the beach being absolutely packed. It's not a regular stop on the world tour and for it to be included in that year's tour, it was super exciting for the local people. So they turned out in droves down to the beach. They're the kind of people that really get together and love to have a party and the beach was packed. Like it was absolutely chockers with, with humans left, right and center. Just getting the guys to run down for their event was, was hectic. Like it was, pandemonium in the crowds, it was pretty full on. Considering the circumstances of, of the kind of pressure that these guys face, to go out and surf in front of a crazy crowd, like packed beach like that, I think they do a phenomenal job and my hat's off to them and yeah, I'm, I'm in awe of how well they handle that situation. Kelly was the favourite going into it. He'd obviously won world titles before, but Geordie was like that young upstart and really put it to Kelly over the course of that year. I can't imagine the kind of pressure that those surfers face in those situations where all eyes are on you in the ocean, you're vying for a world title. There's a lot to be gained from, from winning a world title, not only the prestige of the title itself, but bonuses from your sponsors and worldwide exposure. So it's a, it's a pretty big thing.
After the event had wrapped up, we were lucky enough to stay around for a few days and we lucked into a few waves. We grabbed Matt Wilkinson and said, hey, let's go and do a mission down the coast and find some fun waves. And we actually got this really fun little setup. It was a really interesting little setup. It was like a little dock or a wharf kind of thing. And Wilco would walk around and jump off the back and then paddle out and catch a few waves. And, you know, he's surfing really well on his back end. He, he really does have a great back end style and um, he's really consistent. He can blow the tail, he can do the turns. And um, yeah, I remember him just kind of having heaps of fun out there. The water was tropical, that turquoise color. It just lent to capturing good images and ultimately getting good footage for the project we were working on. We, we stopped off at this little town and um, we found these old boys playing dominoes and it was, it was a real cultural kind of experience for us. The guys must sit around day in, day out, just cruising in their city square, playing dominoes with their mates and laughing. And the funny thing was that one of the guys who was the hairdresser in town was the guy who was playing dominoes, but he was wearing a wig, like his, his hair was a toupee. So it's kind of ironic that the town barber is also the guy that wears a wig. Um, yeah, I found, I found that really hilarious, but it was cool to shoot that stuff. They opened up their culture and their lifestyle and allowed us to film some stuff and it was really neat. I love going on adventures where you don't really know where you're going and you're just exploring. We were discovering little places here and there where we'd try and find spots to surf and we'd be shooting little images and I remember some crazy clouds came across and um, yeah, it was, it was a beautiful spot. I think the culmination of the whole trip ended up happening in the last couple of days. We'd heard that there was a swell going to this little spot and it was pretty much a secret spot. There was a few people that were onto it. And just as we rocked up, Kelly Slater happened to jump out of his car and sort of basically led us there. We was winding up through these little bush tracks and comes out to this sort of rocky enclave where there's like a little wave over here and another wave over there. And it was, the swell was pretty solid. Kelly took one look at it and he was straight out there. It was just the kind of waves that he liked. It was a really hollow left-hander and um, Kelly was just taking off on those things and playing with them. It was really cool to watch him, him surfing those waves and I think he was pretty relaxed just after winning another world title and uh, yeah, going to town on it. After a while of filming that session, I was kind of itching to get out in the water. I had this water housing with a, an old Sony camera. I think it was an FX1000R. It was a pretty old dodgy tape camera, but I worked out this way of getting 100 frames a second out of it, but it was a little bit grainy. The images weren't super clean and it buffered. So basically you wait for the action to happen and then you hit the button and then it records six seconds of what happened prior to that and um, that was the way I was used to shooting back then. Basically, wait for the action to happen and then hit the button. So I was pretty excited to get in the water and get some water shots out there and by this time, Kelly had sort of migrated from the left over to this right. And um, yeah, there was some fun looking waves and I was pretty inexperienced at this point in time too. I'd only been shooting in the water for probably about six to eight months, maybe a year tops. And um, some really hollow waves breaking on some pretty shallow rock too. So um, yeah, I, I was sort of, my, my pulse rate was up and um, always keeping an eye on the horizon to see when the sets were coming and try to make sure I was in the right position. There were a few other guys out in the water filming that day and taking photos, so it's always handy to be able to gauge where to sit when you've got other people out there, but 
Um, nowadays, I, I don't like it when I've got people in front of me. I prefer to you know, have an uninterrupted view of the wave and the surfer. But that just comes down to experience. As you learn, you grow, and you, you learn how to shoot properly and uh, where to be and where not to be. And yeah, there were some fun waves that Kelly got that day. And um, yeah, I was stoked. I remember thinking, this is awesome. Just got the, the world champ surfing and um, getting some cool water shots. Life was pretty filled.